guys. This is my Crown Graphic Special. This is a 4x5 press camera. Costs $300. Value on eBay is about $400. This one's in excellent condition. Everything looks and works like new. Well, except the shutter. The slow shutter speed is a little slow, but that's sort of normal on all old cameras. To fix that, you take it any place and get it clean, lubricated, and adjusted, and it'll bring it back to life just like new. Let me uh, disassemble this a little bit and show it to you. First, we'll take the flash off. This is hooked to the shutter. Then we'll take the uh, wired release, shutter release off. Collapse the viewfinder. And we'll go ahead and fold this thing up. When I bought this, I was in Alaska. I had been shopping on eBay. My wife spotted a ceramic model of a crown graphic, and I said, wouldn't that look nice on the shelf? And to my surprise, she agreed. But I thought, gee, I'd rather have a real one. So I went shopping on eBay. There were lots of them in the $100 range, and most of them looked terrible. But I figured maybe someday I'd get one, fix it up so that at 10 feet it looked okay. But I found this one in Fairbanks, Alaska, and it's like new. I'll go ahead and retract it. First thing I did when I bought it is to fold it up. You have to push this all the way back and lock it. Push the focus all the way back, then release these two guys, and it folds right up. I folded it all up, put it aboard ship, got ready to ship at home. I thought I'd take a look at it, and I couldn't figure out how to open it up. I ended up sticking a credit card in there to get the front open, but it turns out after I got home and read the manual, underneath the leather surface here, there's a lump with a button underneath hidden. You push that button, it opens right up. Snap it open. These are the infinity stops here. I have them clipped down. I'll flip them up to release the lens by turning this to the center. Left or right locks it. Then pull it forward until it hits the infinity stops and then lock it again. Then to focus you would just rack the lens forward or backwards. Now you could focus using the focusing scale on the left here, or you could use the rangefinder mechanism in the top. Just look through the rangefinder like any normal rangefinder camera. Or you could focus with the ground glass. Um, if you remove the um, film pack, you have, or have to remove the film pack to use the ground glass. Then if you open this guy up, open your lens, and you would look through the ground glass and focus on the image. That sounds easy, but it actually has to be pretty bright outside. You have to be covered with a black hood before you can see through it. But ground glass is the best way to focus. There's one other method of focus, which is pretty cool. These um, these cameras came with different kinds of range finders. Some were mounted on the side, some on top. The camera body is wood covered with leather, so actually you could add a viewfinder after the owned one and just drill the holes and mount it. Um, in this case, this is a graphics range finder, not a Calmart range, range finder, which is fairly common. And this one has a unique feature that has a couple of AA batteries in here. This is the battery access door back there, which is missing on almost all of these cameras. I made mine out of wood. And you put two AA batteries in there, you push the little red button here, and it sends a little light bulb goes off, and a beam of light goes out both sides of the rangefinder through the mirror, and as you focus, you bend those lights together. I'll show you that in a minute. For the viewfinder, you pop this guy up. I need 
find something to poke with. This is a spring actually. And this is another viewfinder, not a rangefinder. So that's how you would take pictures at infinity, is just look through the little peephole through that square and that would be your framing square. And if you were closer than that to compensate for parallax error, you'll pull this guy up and there's little notches in the back that are clearly labeled. This is for setting enemies 15 feet away and next notch is 8 feet away and then finally all the way up is correcting for 6 feet away for your images. I'll just slide that all down and tuck it away. And the way you take a picture is you set the shutter speed and f-stop on the front. F-stops go from 4.7 to, to 32 here with this little lever. And the shutter speed is on this dial. It's set to 500th of a second now. This is how you cock the shutter. This is how you trip the shutter. And normally you would use the release cord hook to that and have this on a tripod. It has a tripod socket on the bottom. Also has one on the side. Um, this side underneath the handle, I think. I'm not sure where the side socket is. At any rate, there is one there. Now, if you wanted to, there's a trigger here and an optional cable that works its way around and into the same slot for the tripe for the release of the shutter. And that's for taking pictures like a press photographer would. They're problematic and most people had difficulty with them. And for landscape photography, you would want it on a tripod anyhow and you wouldn't want to be pushing on the side of the camera. Now to take a picture, you set the shutter speed, f-stop, focus with the rail, and then you put in your film back. Now these film backs are pretty neat. They're, um, each one holds two pieces of film to load them at home in the dark. You pull the two dark slides out. You get your brand new film, take it out of the box in a dark room. There's a little notch on the side so you can tell which side is the emulsion side up. You put that in there, put the dark slide over it. Cover it up, put your other piece of film in, put the dark slide over it to cover it up. This is a plastic holder. I've got some wooden holders that came with the camera originally. Then you just stick it in. When you're ready to take your picture, you pull your dark slide out, take your picture, put your dark slide back in, pull the film out, flip it around to the other side. Put it back in and take your second picture. It's a pretty versatile camera. Now one of the neat things after I got it was I wanted to get a flash unit. So I got this flash unit. I bought it actually as two different purchases. Let me mount it here for a second. It has a little button for mounting. I had to um, build the bracket on the camera out of a piece of aluminum to match the pictures I've seen online. Then there's a sync cord that goes from the side here over to the lens. We'll just leave that off. But what I found when I went shopping online for a flash unit that they cost more than the cameras did. Now let me demonstrate that. And here's the reason. It's because during all of the Star Wars episodes, all of the lightsabers were made out of Graflex flash holders. And let me show you how that works. First of all, we got to take this top off. Just a little knurled knob. Release it down. These two brackets hold it onto the, to the unit.
So in, near, in nearly every episode of Star Wars, even starting with the first one, the lightsabers are made out of different variations of these Groflex flash holders. And so these things were selling for over $100, sometimes more on eBay. Now it turns out that there were two kinds of flash holders you could buy, or at least two lengths. The short one, like this one, was more convenient. It took two D cells to fire the flash, but if you wanted to, optionally you could get this extension. So I managed to find a short one at an antique store at a bargain price because it wasn't a lightsaber. And you can get this extension that adds one extra D-cell and makes it into a true lightsaber. These were made from 1947 to 1973. Let me get this out of the way. And this particular model uh, was made in 1959. Now, speed graphics were made earlier, from 1912 to 1968. The difference between a crown graphic and a speed graphic is back here, just before the film plane, was a focal plane shutter. It had a crank-up mechanism and a way to set the shutter speed. So those cameras actually had two shutters, the shutter release that's built into the lens plus the focal plane shutter. To run the focal plane shutter, you would have to disable the front shutter by setting it to the B mode and opening it up and then using the back shutter. Some of the advantages of the focal plane shutter are some, some, some obvious photographic advantages, but one of them is that you could use any lens with this camera then. wouldn't have to have a shutter built in. Now this one is a special, and what makes it special is this lens. Um, when this one was made in 1959, a special was available, and this is the lens board. It just pops out like this. So if you look high and low on the camera, the only place it sells special is right on this, right on this lens board. And what made this lens special was that all of the other lenses for the graphics were made in Rochester, New York by Kodak. But this one was made in Germany. Now today you would think, wow, that really does make it special. But in reality, at the time the Rochester lenses were considered superior and the German lens is inferior, and this one was cheaper to import, and so a Crown Graphic Special was $20 cheaper than a regular Crown Graphic. So special was an interesting marketing term. The other thing that's interesting about all of these graphics cameras is the tilts and swings of the lens. So if you loosen these two screws on the top, you can slide this lens up and down, to offset it from the film plane, and if you loosen these two screws on the bottom, you can tilt it. So with tilt and swing, you can compensate for parallax errors on pictures of buildings and architecture and landscape photography. And so, of course, we could do that same thing in Photoshop now in just a couple of seconds. To do that properly on this camera, you would have to be focusing and viewing through the ground glass lens to, to know if the image is actually completely corrected the way you want. But that's my crown graphic. Now the speed graphics were made from 1912 to 1968. The crowns from uh, 47 to 73. In its heyday, the Crown Graphic 4x5 was the world's premier press camera. Uh, to press photographers in the 1940s, they were considered quite light in weight. Now, this particular model weighs 6.7 pounds without batteries in the flash unit, but with the flash unit on it. So, I wouldn't consider it light. So, that's it. My favorite camera. It sort of started my camera collection. Prior to that, I only had a couple. This one, after this, I started recreating the cameras that I foolishly gave away or sold when I was younger. This is the rangefinder mechanism with the cover off. And here's how the coupling 
works as you rack the lens back from infinity towards a close-up, you'll notice the sheet of tin moves from the upper right to the lower left, and vice versa. This is the cover for the rangefinder mechanism. You'll notice the light bulb and the two batteries. That's for adjusting the focus in the dark. It will actually project a beam and you make the two beams come together. The graphic rangefinder on this camera has a feature called light beam focusing. You press the little red button on the left and it sends a light beam out. Here I'm trying to focus on this bookcase. You rack the focus back from infinity until the two light beams coincide and you're in focus. In a second here I'll turn another light off so it's easier to see. Here's how the light beams look if I point it at you and press the red button. Now I'm focusing on the edge of the desk. See the two light beams coming out of the rangefinder as I move the focus back. Stop it there. I'm supposedly in focus at the front edge of that desk. subscribe button just below the video. You never know what you might see next. Just saying.